Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Nohilani Graf. We're learning more about the people involved and police are trying to track down the last person to see what happened. We have breaking news in the case of a missing Gresham woman. Within the last hour, investigators announced the body has been found and a man is in jail for murder. I'm trying to bridge, you know, our insomniac viewers, right. our <laughs> graveyard shifters. I wanted to put you to bed and then wake you up bright and early. You can just feel the excitement here. You know, the athletes are focused when you look at them. People in the stands, fans, people working this event are excited and smiling. Full disclosure, this next story has been featured on MSN and Yahoo News today, but I do have a personal connection and I'll tell you why in a sec. Great timing to talk about solar power today <laughs> because we got plenty of it, but it sounds like it is limited. And I'm Nohelani Graf. Kelly Warner will be back in this chair tomorrow. For now, I'm going to log a little serious anchor time with my friend That's Mark right. here and see what the crack of dawn actually looks like. It's been a while. From the courtroom, a jury says the Harrisburg School District was not at fault in a bullying lawsuit filed by the family of a middle school student. The student suffers from Tourette syndrome, which can be socially disruptive. His parents pulled him out of the seventh grade two years ago because they said the bullying became intolerable. Now, Drew Wadier got the all clear to be transported to a San Diego medical center, and that trip happened late Wednesday night. Take a look at the new pictures posted by their loved ones of Drew being loaded into an ambulance in Mexico. He was then airlifted to a hospital in Southern California. New today, we get to see how police mapped out that uptick in crime. EPD just released this week's data-led policing report, and they're zeroing in on a crime trend happening in Southeast Eugene. There was also a spike in car break-ins, but get this, most of the crimes happened between 5 and 7 in the morning. You were possibly awake making coffee. Coming up new at 6 on New Source Today, with all of these thefts and burglaries happening in one section of town, Eugene police say there is a measure you can take to protect the information you leave in your car, and it involves your address. That part of our crime tracker ahead, new at 6 on New Source Today. If you have been dying to tell your member of Congress what you think about the fiscal cliff, today may be your chance. While negotiations in Washington are up in the air, most lawmakers have gone home for a long weekend break. Back here at home, Eugene City Councilors want to know what you envision for the future of Eugene City Hall. Should they rebuild? remodel or relocate. The council is close to a vote, but first they're asking for public opinion to help shape their decision. It's finally starting to feel a little bit more like the Christmas season That's outside right. getting cold. Yeah, it is. So let's see how cold things will get today. Coffee chain hopes to have 1,500 stores in China by 2015. Somebody get me a venti non-fat something with, with stat. <laughs> You'll be able to find it no matter what. Yeah, you have one in one hand in one store and reach to the other one in the other store. All right, time to get back to today's daily giveaway. It's your chance to start your day with a smile and a win. Today we're giving away a $30 gift certificate to Hole in the Wall Barbecue. It goes to the first person who correctly answers exactly. You'll be doing just that. Mm -hmm. So let's see who our winner is. The question first. I'm Ryan Cummings. And I'm Nohelani Graf, live at Hayward Field, where thousands of people have already come to get their first taste of the Olympic trials. Not much happening on the track tonight. The only noise out there, leaf blowers, cleanup crews soaking up all the water from earlier today. But hours ago, it was anything but quiet out here. The athletes put on a show that gave the fans something to cheer about. Gold medalist Bruce Jenner was also here, and he's in town with his sons Brandon and Brody, and they caused a lot of excitement today at the Inn at the Fifth in Eugene. They actually brought their own camera crew. E is filming them as part of their reality TV show, Keeping Up with the Kardashians. News Source 16's Angela Brower caught up with Bruce earlier today and talked to him about his return to track town. And to me, that was the reward. Certainly is the reward. Angela Brower reporting there. You know, a lot of effort has gone into making this a memorable experience for the fans as well. And one place that you can get in where you don't need a ticket is the Fan Festival. It's totally free and it's right next to Hayward Field. Right at the starting block, you'll find all kinds of games like balancing beams, hurdles, even video games. Two at the trials starts pretty early. The Fan Festival opens at 8 o'clock. You can catch a free shuttle from Autzen Stadium, South Eugene High School. Those start running about an hour before, and then the track and field events kick off at 9. Ryan, everybody's got to get down there. It's it's so fun, and we've we've talked about this earlier today. I think one of the coolest things about being down here mm -hmm. is when you hear on the loudspeakers when they say, the second fastest woman in the world yeah. is on the track, or the highest jumper in the world. I mean, it really, when you think about it, it's amazing to be here. 
Yeah, and we were talking about that earlier. It was like saying you're the human cheetah, the second fastest person and possibly some people breaking more records than maybe the fastest exactly. person in the world, hopefully. Yeah, if, any, if anything, you know, if it's like today, then the next nine days are, are going to be something to see. Part of history. Yeah, definitely a lot to look forward to. All right, thanks. No Helani Graf reporting live. Picture this, a multi-story hospital on fire. <laughs> Alarms sounding. <laughs> Smoke-filled hallways. <laughs> Patients scattered and scared. This is the scenario for Eugene and Springfield firefighters and hospital staff. I think this is the first time I know of that we've ever drilled in a high-rise where we've able to smoke it up and uh, actually have staff that works with us. A day of make-believe to prepare them for the real thing. There's always that chance. Some of it is mapped out. Each fire crew arrives already assigned a job. Some pull hoses. Others are on search and rescue. Removing the largest number of people that are threatened by the fire and then working down from there. A test of endurance. We just had a couple of small fires set which smoked up a couple of floors. But as you can see, it's pretty taxing. And a chance to test every resource. Would you also dispatch uh, life flight? Life flight lands to pick up what could be a burn victim to fly directly to Portland. Ladder trucks load patients from the roof and lower them down to ambulances. Inside and out, boundaries are stretched. Weaknesses are spotted. We were lacking resources right away uh, when you have uh, smoke on two floors and we had uh, 11 victims. Um, again, this initial response was uh, not enough to take care of the problems. <laughs> For firefighters, a lack of manpower. For the hospital, a power overload. Too many walkie-talkies on scene canceled. There's out. Communication was cut, making this a critical exercise for all involved. As you do with anything in practice, you get better. And so we can kind of see where our deficiencies are and, and the good things that we do with it. Limits are pushed. Lessons are learned. So when a real emergency calls, they'll be ready. It started as a friendly competition between Thad Starr and his brother. Who could grow the bigger pumpkin? If you could lift it, you lost. Then Thad's brother grew a 500 pounder and this competition grew out of control. This so. pumpkin is pretty huge. I think some dogs can fit in. It probably could and at 900 pounds, this sucker's the little one. Destined to be perched out in front of my house with a big smiley jack-o'-lantern face on it. He's got a thousand pounder waiting for competition and another giant still on the ground. You got to touch him. You got to thump him to, just to see if it's real. And then there's Thad's prize winner, his Cinderella story. Really, you need luck on your side. A seed too small, soil bed too short, and out came this, a 1,524 pound pumpkin, the heaviest in Half Moon Bay, California, fifth largest in the world. It needed a small crane and its own trailer just to leave the garden. The harder you work, the better you do, and, and I worked really hard. And now there's no stopping Thad, or these pumpkins. If you're 100 years old or two years old, it brings a smile to everybody's face. Thanks for staying up with us tonight. I'm Ryan Cummings. And I'm Nohelani Graf. We are looking at 100 degree temperatures tomorrow and maybe the next. And it's going to take some extra effort to make sure the heat doesn't get the best of you. The hot weather health warning is our top story tonight. The other major concern is wildfire danger. The hot weather will make things worse. And wildfire officials around the state are asking you to be especially careful if you cook outside, smoke, or use machines like chainsaws that could send off sparks. There are already two new fires burning in the Douglas County area. The main portion, the Butte Fire, is six miles northeast of Lamolo Lake at Windigo Butte. New at 11, we're getting our first look at the man accused of shooting a Benton County Sheriff Sergeant. Investigators say Demichio Cardenas is still in a Portland hospital tonight. They just released his picture from a prior arrest in California two years ago. He is accused of crashing a stolen car during a police chase Saturday night north of Albany. A new Source 16 update on a deadly crash near Brownsville today. We're learning more about the people involved and police are trying to track down the last person to see what happened. Lane County commissioners will not take their budget battle to the ballot yet. Today they voted down a public safety measure for November that could have opened more jail beds. Timing was a major factor in this decision, though. A new immigration policy is already having a major impact around Oregon. For the first time, young people brought to the U.S. illegally can apply to stay in the country and get work permits. In Oregon, more than 16,000 people are expected to apply for the program known as Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. Dozens of people already 
already lined up outside the application support center in downtown Portland this morning. A special member of the Eugene M's is blowing out birthday candles. Sluggo is celebrating his third birthday. And in the spirit of the big kid he is, about a dozen mascots joined him for a game of kickball that already started off kind of unfair, though. Oversized feet don't always give you an advantage. The Oregon Duck fell in his tail feathers there. Others, like Mattress Mania mascot, fared better. Everyone on each team got to kick twice. Lugo's team went last, so he pretty much won. That's awesome. Happy and I like the, where the cone come from? I'm not exactly sure who the cone belongs to, to be honest. <laughs> After Sluggo's game, he was there to root on the M's as they hosted the Tri-City Dust Devils. Joe Leadingham has some quick highlights in 60-second sports. Joe? It's in the Powerball of 21. There goes that island I was planning on buying. And there goes Darn. the retirement I was going to hold yesterday and tomorrow. <laughs> I was thinking about yesterday. <laughs> He'll be back. He'll be back tomorrow. There you go.